Welcome, everybody. This is Daniela from the Embodiment Conference, and uh, this is a new tutorial on how to use Zoom. And in this tutorial, what we got, we're going to cover is, uh, yeah, the basic meeting settings, um, at least the first part of it, because it's uh, a little bit longer. So in the first uh, tutorials, we covered um, what you can uh, or need to set up in your account in order to have like a really good meeting experience and a lot of interactive tools. And uh, we covered also uh, how you can set up a meeting, how you can start a meeting. So this is what I did. I started a meeting and somebody joined me. Um, participant joined me, which is actually just me from a different device. But that helps me to show you a couple of things. So starting with very simple things, uh, which is the view. So you can uh, choose if you want to have gallery or speaker view. I'm right now on gallery view and gallery view means I have uh, myself and all the participants in equally big windows. Um, so if I have up to 20 people, I see them all in my screen, uh, just in very small windows. Um, if I don't want to do that, if I want to ha see just the person who is speaking, especially when I'm like participating and listening to somebody, I can change to speaker view. And I'm doing this in the upper uh, right, clicking on speaker view, and then I see a big screen. And uh, here where you see my mouse, I see smaller screens. And if there are more participants, I see them like one, two, three, four, five, and then I can scroll through. Zoom is also not very narcissistic, so if I'm speaking, I don't see myself on the big screen, which is kind of nice because then I don't have the feeling I'm just talking to my own like mirror picture, uh, but I'm talking to at least somebody. Um, so let's go back. Um, what else? So if I'm running a Zoom meeting, the first thing I'm always doing is I'm Clicking here on this manage participants, which opens a window to my right with a list of all participants and a couple of buttons. I will explain them in a moment. And I'm opening the chat. Um, I said before, um, the chat is, um, yeah, it is one way to make people uh, interactive, to get people participate. So I can, for example, facilitate something like, hey, can you type into the chat where you're coming from? Or what is your expectation for this session? What do you want to get out? Like in one or two words. So people start already to engage and um, I, uh, I can get a sense of the group. So I really like the chat. And uh, if you ever saw Mark Walsh facilitating a session, he really brings it to mastery. So um, he, a great use of chat and making making a session interactive through the chat. So I find this a very valuable tool. The participants list and so far is important because I can do certain things with the participants, but I can also like um, have use the buttons which are here. So one button which might be very useful for you is either to mute everybody or to unmute everybody. So uh, that applies to everybody who is participant and also to the co-host if as a host you're pushing this button. So um, if I'm muting everybody, that means everybody except the host will be muted. If I'm unmuting everybody, everybody uh, will be unmuted. So people can, I don't know, applaud or yeah, give gratitude or getting a sense of the group can sometimes be nice. Um, I heard from a lot of people that they, uh, the experience of a session can be very interrupted when people mute or unmute themselves accidentally. So what Zoom does is that the um, whoever talks, um, the camera and the microphone will go to them. So it's not like in a room where you have like different uh, um, sounds and noises and you can like get them in uh, simultaneously. The camera and the uh, microphone will choose for the most prominent one. So for example, if somebody has their, uh, is unmuted and uh, there is, I don't know, a, a dog barking in the background or they're like uh, pushing down their, their cup or uh, there is somebody like walking in the background or they're moving on the chair. And this is a prominent sound. The sound will go away from the speaker and people will hear this participant instead of the speaker. So in big groups, what I'm choosing for is I'm 
unmuting everybody, uh, muting everybody, and I'm unlocking that. So uh, I don't allow participants to mute or unmute themselves. I, as a host or the co-host, will do that. Um, there are a few other options. What I can do is uh, I can choose that everybody who's entering the room is muted from the first moment. I can play an enter or exit chime so I notice when somebody gets in and out. I personally don't like this too much because I find it very distracting, but you might like it. Um, and another nice option is this lock meeting button. So uh, lock meeting means that um, if the group is complete or if I want to start my session and don't want to be disturbed by anybody coming into the room accidentally or so, I can lock the meeting means nobody can enter this meeting anymore. Um, that can be very nice if you have a private class or you use the link for, for different things. So that might be an option. You also want to invite participants to click this participants button. Um, they don't have the same things like you have. Maybe let's show that. So um, I'm making my participant now host. So I can show you the control of being actually a participant. And what you see is I got this little button, raise hand. And uh, with raising hand, I can press that. And as a participant, the the host can see, hey, I want to say something. So uh, that's quite nice uh, in order to like, if I want to include a question and answer, or if I want to include um, that people can say something without just unmuting themselves and like uh, talking into the room, because this this can be in a virtual room really, really disturbing. So I really like this digital raise hand button. Beside all this other nonverbal feedback, which you can use as you wish. Okay. And um, since I'm the account owner, I can also like click here, reclaim host and say, no, now I'm the host again. So let's stay with this. That's the first part of the Zoom basics. Uh, there will be another tutorial on uh, more Zoom basics where we look a little bit more into these buttons and a little bit more into these buttons. Uh, thank you for being with me and see you in the next tutorial.